Well, boys and girls, people of all ages, it is indeed that time. Thanksgiving time, rivalry week is here in college football. We're so close to the end. As, you know, week 12 concluded, now we're on to week 13. You know, the Pac-2 may remain next year. It's going to be some type of agreement with the Mountain West where you play like seven games against the Mountain West and then a game against each other, you know. Washington, Washington State, they get to play, you know, for the next five years. Who knows? The jury's out on Oregon, Oregon State. But we'll talk about the games between, you know, those four teams for this year in a moment. So, yeah, Michigan, you know, they ended up being 11-0. and Ohio State's also 11-0. and Iowa will be the opponent as Iowa took care of business against Illinois, even though it was, you know, tough business. But they took care of business regardless. You know how Iowa's offense is. So, yeah, Michigan had to survive against Talia Tagovailoa and the Terps' attempts to upset them. But ultimately, the Michigan defense saved the day. Same thing with Texas' defense yet again. Saving the day. They haven't clinched a Big 12 spot yet, but they are the team that can clinch it first on Friday. So, talk about what Texas can do. We'll talk about all the Big 12 nonsense in a moment. Louisville will be in the ACC championship as they outlast Miami. Jack Plummer played pretty good game, pretty damn good game. North Carolina, you know, they got smacked around by North Carolina. No, I'm just kidding. They played, they got smacked around by Clemson. Uh, that's a typo. So the ACC championship will include the Louisville Cardinals, who are 10-1, and one, and the undefeated Jordan Travis-less Florida State Seminoles. Jordan Travis is done for the year. Ankle-related injury. You could tell by how many times ESPN would show it, or rather the CW would show it. You know, it was a pretty bad injury. Um, you know, towards the ankles, you know, LCL, ACL area. You know, so now the Knolls are ranked behind the Washington Huskies, who survived Oregon State with a gritty effort from Michael Penix. Romeo Duze and that defense making plays when it counted. The SDS playoffs are here. I don't have the bracket up for the moment, but it's a pretty interesting bracket. We'll talk about the bracket, you know, um, talk about more FCS stuff in the coming up weeks, but now is not the time. First round, you know, it's all streaming. Uh, second round's all streaming. We'll talk more towards the quarterfinals and stuff like that. About FCS playoffs. So the slate, uh, you see, I pulled up the good old handy dandy ESPN type stuff for you know getting this all on here. Uh, you see the spreads and stuff like that. Um, Thursday night, a game of no consequence really in the national race. Um, it would be if it were a 12 team playoff. Personally, again, I've stated this before, don't like the idea of a 12 team playoff. Don't like the idea, but it is what it is. Uh, so, you know, Ole Miss can end up, you know, somewhere in the top 12 if they take care of business against Mississippi State. Friday's more important, though. TCU Oklahoma is surprisingly going to be very important early. Um, Oklahoma has two losses, but they have not clinched a spot in the Big 12 championship. They are behind Oklahoma State, who they lost to. Yes, they beat Texas, but they've lost two games in the Big 12. They need some things to happen in order for them to stay in this race. They have to beat ECU first. The other, um, the uh, another game in that you know early stretch is UTSA Tulane. That game there is going to decide one of the teams at least who will be going to the American Conference Championship. Um, there is a potential possibility that. Both these teams could play again, but if Tulane beats UTSA, Tulane's going, and they're the highest-ranked group of five team at the moment. You see Liberty is ranked at 25 now. They are already in the uh, Conference USA Championship against Mexico State, who beat Auburn. But yeah, UTSA-Tulane, very important for the G5 race. Both these teams are undefeated, along with SMU, undefeated in the Americans, so... At minimum, we will have two American teams. At maximum, 
<laughs> there could be just one from the American that's undefeated and will get to host. Um, Missouri could end in the top 10. Penn State could stay in the top 11 if they beat Michigan State. You have Texas Tech, Texas, and Oregon State, Oregon. You know, again, Texas trying to lock up a spot in the Big 12 championship. Um, Texas Tech has a pretty good running back. Oregon State, we already know. Jonathan Smith and company, DJ Ulagale, and the Beavs. You know, heartbreaking loss last week. They, you know, they, they, they had the game, you know, right there in their hands against Washington, but they just couldn't, they could not come up with the material needed at the very end. And Oregon has been blitzing opponents, and you see the line 13 and a half for that game between these two teams for the Civil War for what presumably will be the final time. And then, of course, Ohio State, Michigan. Ohio State, you know, for the purposes of, you know, this game. It's going to come down to, you know, who's who's going to want this one more. This one is going to be another battle in the trenches type game, similar to, you know, last year and the year before that. Michigan tried to win their third straight in this game. Ohio State, you know, wanted to prove the doubters wrong and everything like that. Marvin Harris Jr. still trying, you know, even though he's not even close to a Heisman contending type feel in my eyes and, also in a lot of people's eyes as well. You know, he's he's definitely a receiver to watch out for. Michigan got picked apart by multiple Maryland Terrapins last week. It wasn't just one. It was more than one. So that's going to be something to watch. It's also Kate Stover for Ohio State as well. And Emeka Abuka, who's been kind of, you know, off and off. Julian Fleming, off and off. Um, for Michigan, we all know what the deal is. Run the ball behind Blake Corm, who's finally running the ball the way he should have been all season long. You know, and I get it. Michigan's been blowing out teams left and right. So, you know, there has to be much use for him this year. But Penn State game, you know, him, Donovan Edwards, J.J. McCarthy's been playing pretty efficient. Last couple of games he hasn't, but, you know, something's got to give. McCord, McCarthy, you no know, Jim Harbaugh on the sidelines, of course. Ryan Day trying to prove the doubters wrong. One hell of a game we're going to get. Also, keep your eye on Kentucky-Louisville. Yes, despite the fact that Louisville is ranked 10th, chaos can still brew. So just because Louisville is ranked 10th with one loss does not mean that chaos can still brew. We have a whole Thanksgiving weekend of football to where chaos can Simmer and Louisville can sneak into this thing. Do not count Louisville out of this thing yet. Um, I think we all know at this point our Heisman front runner is Jake Daniels. He's going to look to finish it off against the Jimbo Fisherless Texas A&M Aggies. Again, I don't get the whole, well, you know, Bo Nix, you know, can win the Heisman and everything like that. He's really kind of like a J.J. McCarthy in a way where he's only played, you know, four quarters in like a couple games this year, to be completely honest with you. So, you know, this is Danielson's to lose. You know, he could lose it if, you know, if there's not a performance that, you know, is worthy enough. But honestly, the numbers, it's a MVP award. That's what the Heisman is. It's an MVP award. So, this thing should go to Jay Daniels, regardless of what happens between Oregon and Washington in the upcoming you know, couple weeks. Again, Alabama-Auburn, the final Iron Bowl on CBS, the final SEC on CBS game before the SEC championship anyway, is Alabama-Auburn. Auburn just lost to Mexico State, and Alabama trying to state their claim and you know, keep themselves in the mix. They have to beat Auburn to stay in the mix. Don't beat Auburn. You're out, you know, even before the Georgia game, which is going to be tough. Arizona, again, taking on a hapless Arizona State team. It's not very good, but can give teams a challenge if need be. Again, Arizona, they want Oregon State to beat Oregon. That's what they want. Noah Fafita has been playing lights out the past few weeks. Oklahoma State, 
They got to play BYU. And again, BYU, you know, not great, but they can do some damage. You know, Oklahoma State has to beat BYU in order to stay ahead of Oklahoma. You know, Oklahoma's waiting for Oklahoma State to mess up. So, and keep in mind, Dylan Gabriel has been, you know, he's been, he got injured, um, you know, during the Oklahoma game, you know, against BYU. Or was it the week before? I forgot. Um, Liberty, again, lurking in that G5 spot. I don't know what the committee will do, you know, come December 4th, if it were, you know, Liberty and one of the AAC teams. I don't know what they would do. Personally, it should be an undefeated team, you know, ahead of other, you know, teams with losses. But, I mean, it is what it is. You know, Liberty schedule is not very good. And you see that UTEP game, not a very good team there. And then, you know, the rest of the slate, the Pac-12 network gets the final, you know, gets their final game as Notre Dame Stanford. Is that hilarious? That's pretty hilarious. But, you know, Washington, Washington State, the Apple Cup, Washington must win this game. You know, they're already in the Pac-12 championship. They must win this game against Washington State to stay alive as the number four team. Florida State, Florida, this is more interesting now. With Jordan Travis's injury, I forgot who the guy for Florida State is, you know, right now. But if Florida State does not beat Florida, they are out. Just, you know, there's no way with the way with the way things have been shaking out with nine teams still in the mix, so close together, this late into the season, you know, if Florida State loses, they are out. If they lose next week, you know, if they don't lose. Then on this weekend against Florida, and they lose against Louisville, they're out. So, you know, there is precedent here. You don't want to lose late. That's the main thing. You don't want to lose late. And then finally, you know, Georgia, Georgia Tech, Georgia trying to just, you know, submit their claim as the number one team. You see that spread of 24 points for the Bulldogs against Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech ain't going ain't they're not going to give up without a fight. This is rivalry week. You cannot you this is not the time to be giving up without a fight. So we got we got lots of we got lots of good stuff. You see Clemson's ranked in there and North Carolina is not now that North Carolina fell to Clemson, so you know. Um so yeah, Big 12 again, it's Texas, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, maybe Kansas State. Um, but that's like a low possibility at this point. The ACC set, the Big Ten, is just waiting on Ohio State, Michigan. The SEC is set, and the Pac-12, it's either going to be Oregon or Arizona taking on Washington. And then the AAC is going to figure it itself out with those three undefeated. So, because there could be, again, there could be at minimum two, you know, or rather, at maximum, two undefeated going into the conference championship weekend. All the other conference championships are close to being set and stuff like that. So it's all going to work out. What a weekend. Cannot wait for it. I hope you're enjoying the feast week so far. I know I am. So, y'all, I'm going to get on with that out of here. Y'all take care. And I will see you all once again next week to talk these conference championships.